evening. Uh, my name is Khaled. Uh, my team members are Raphael, Clark uh, and the Distance, and Tom Spell. Uh, Tom Spell. We will present to you today the design and management of the MIT 100K competition in the Netflix. Our agenda for today, for today will first begin by going over the competition background and project description. We will then highlight a problem with the management of the 100K competition. Then we'll cover some system, our system dynamics approach, show simulation results, and we'll conclude by, by, several, by some recommendations. First, I will begin by going over the competition background and project description. And this slide. Okay. The 100K is, uh, is fully run by MIT students. Um, the first prize is 100K. It's actually a little bit more than that, but they still brand it as 100K. It creates a dynamic exchange between entrepreneurs and sponsors looking for the next big idea. It is open to, MIT, to all MIT students and outside uh, uh, entrepreneurs with the condition that uh, one MIT full-time student should be on, on the team. Uh, since it started in 1989, it helped create over 130 companies. It generated more than 3,500 jobs, and it received $770 million of venture capital funding. A brief history about the competition. It started in 1989, and it was initially branded as 10K competition. It was rebranded in 96 to 50K, and uh, in 2006 it was again rebranded to 100K. Uh, and its first year, they had 64 competing teams. Four sponsors and mainly one contest. Uh, in 2009, they had 260 competing teams, 13 sponsors, and three contests. Um, I just would like to bring your attention that the spike you see there is due to the 15th anniversary of the competition. So the what they, the organizers envision is growth in number of com uh, competing teams and the prize purse. So. One main problem that the organizers face, face is how to keep the competition going in terms of competing teams and most importantly in terms of prize money. Given the limited number, sorry, given the limited number of volunteers that run the competition every year and the limited time they have to run the competition. We developed a detailed system design model, a system dynamics model. Sorry, just my major. <laughs> system dynamics model. Um, this is a simplified view showing uh, portions of our model that cover the sponsor system dynamics model and the staffing productivity. Our main focus is growth, and we are showing here some uh, input and output variables that we will cover in detail later. Um, we interviewed one of the 100K uh, associate directors, and we found out that they had very high staff turnover over the years. They have poor knowledge transfer, and uh, they mentioned that this year they plan to develop an internal wiki uh, after the final event, but they said it might be unlikely due to the end of the year and people leaving. Uh, typically, they filter the number of, uh, or they control the number of volunteers coming in every year. They limit it to 50. And they have about 15 people, or what we call experienced staff, uh, from the previous year continuing on uh, uh, organizing the role uh, for another year. This year, they s decided not to uh, put a cap on the number of volunteers, and they accepted all 75 uh, volunteers that showed up. Uh, they still had uh, an average number of 15 mentors. Uh, Raphael now will go over the system dynamics approach. Of <coughs> As Ali said, uh, we're going to use project management principles and methods in order to help this particular organization to keep growing. And we have seen all along in the course different ways to, to help organization, help project to improve, improve profits. Uh, we select system dynamic approach for several reasons. The main one is the, the stakeholder uh, in this organization, the, they made decision over the time, uh, year after year. So we, we identify as the, the interview with the stakeholder and also the data collection that some of the decisions could have some side effect. So because this is a policy resistant in the organization, we, we think one of the factors more important is the high turnover of staffing, which causes repeated uh, learning curve effect. So, basically, <coughs> uh, we build a model and in order to test our hypothesis. Or 
dynamic hypothesis that we formulate is as the number of volunteer increase, we have a, we finish the project early, so we have time to implement a knowledge management management strategy, like for example, building a wiki. If we are if we do the wiki in several years, we reduce of time because we decrease the time to get experience. So basically, we have more time for other improvement, like for example, develop marketing strategy and recruit more sponsor, and finally, meet our goal, which is increase the funding. So we build the model, and we use a line model, uh, for example, the staff part, and also the, the, the number of tasks. Also, we develop a funding and a sponsor part of the model. The more challenge we face building the model is that this is a temporary project. Every year, we run the same project again. So we have every year the same hundred tasks. So in order to build a 10 year uh, horizon, we develop a false train. As we can see here, 100 tasks every year is uh, built into the model. We can see here the work to do. Every year, we put 100 tasks. And when the work is done, so we reset the, the stop what to do. Also with the staffing, similar thing, because we uh, reviewed a volunteer every year. And we develop the same post train. And now uh, Bob will explain the part of the model who, who focus on sponsor and funding. All right, uh, thanks Raphael. Um, as mentioned earlier, uh, a major portion of making the 100K is devoted to fundraising. If you don't have sponsors, funding, awards, and seed money, you don't really have a competition. Uh, so we modified the system dynamics model to incorporate the uh, effects of the um, sponsorship and funding, and likewise the uh, effects of uh, seeking additional sponsorship on the additional workload. Uh, to remain focused on the main purpose of the presentation, and also due to the interest of time, I'm not going to go through the, uh, the components of the uh, uh, sponsorship model uh, in detail unless possibly maybe you've got the end time permit. But uh, essentially, we've added stocks and flows representing sponsors, uh, funding from contributions, uh, operation spending, and awards allocations. Uh, changes in the number of sponsors and their contributions are affected by uh, the perceived quality of the competition. And uh, we've modeled what we consider perceived quality uh, based on the amount of excess time available after all the tasks have been completed within a year. And this would uh, indicate extra effort available for uh, seeking additional funding. Alternatively, uh, the uh, fifth test uh, cannot be completed within a, a year. Uh, the perceived quality is then bombing out of for left unfinished. And so the effects of perceived quality uh, will either increase or reduce uh, the number of sponsors and their contributions. And uh, additional workload is then uh, added to the annual tax uh, for efforts associated with uh, seeking additional uh, funding, um, such as when you begin to allocate more awards or operation spending um, more than the amount of uh, funding actually coming in. And on the, uh, the slide uh, shown in front of you, uh, we then calibrated all the input variables from, uh, uh, from our sponsorship model to best uh, match historic data as closely uh, as possible. Um, uh, similar to the growth chart you saw at the beginning of the, comp or the presentation, uh, historic data was uh, based on data gathered from both discussions with committee members as well as uh, research of uh, available public data. And uh, from here we then ran simulations to better understand the effects of uh, certain parameters, uh, which Tom will now discuss in greater detail. Watch the progress of their new volunteers. 
volunteers very early in the project uh, to see whether this is happening or not. The next thing we tested is uh, how does the wiki actually affect the project. And it's a little different because we don't think it's uh, the same kind of before and after effect. It's something that accumulates over time. And so in the model, we implemented this by uh, the effect actually gradually reducing time gain experience over time, which here reduces uh, the length of the project over time. And these are the actual numbers from the graph uh, for year 10, where the wiki uh, eventually, under the base case with 50 volunteers, reduces uh, the time by five weeks. And if it's combined with 75 volunteers, it's a potential gain of uh, about 10 weeks. And since we're interested in growth, uh, we tie this into our sponsorship portion of the model, and we see that uh, after the wiki is introduced, there is gradual growth in uh, sponsorship as more time becomes available to focus on new tasks related to sponsorship. So now we have our conclusions and recommendations. Uh, just to reiterate what we've done, we talked about how the number of inexperienced staff can affect time to completion, how that affects what we call event quality and in turn affects growth. And we also talked about how time to gain experience similarly affects time to completion and event quality. And so our final recommendations are to uh, accept up to 75 volunteers every year with the caveat that there is that risk of uh, potentially increasing time to gain experience. Uh, so that's something they want to keep track of. Uh, and if it starts uh, slowing down, then they want to implement a new policy. Uh, if they are able to keep it uh, the same as previous years, then they can go ahead and implement the wiki uh, within the scope of the project instead of waiting until uh, the following summer when everyone is going to be gone anyway. And then, <laughs> and then uh, as more time becomes available, they can allocate more resources to uh, fundraising and marketing and other tasks that will increase uh, the project. Finally, thanks Jim, our mentor, and uh, 